okay gives what they say server will client will request to server server will receive that request server will process that request and give what response so here terminology we use is request response something like input and output so instead of using the term input it would be very much appropriate to use the term request and okay that is one part second thing that we will highlight is what are your uh, clients then what are the different clients all internet explorer is one client firefox is one client uh, chrome is one client opera is one client safari is one client they all communicate with whom server server also you have one no server so also multiple when clients are multiple servers are also multiple so all can communicate to whom server what you are doing on internet you say www.gmail.com that is being sent from your system from your browser you are making a request request will go to server gmail server and from there server will process what you are and server will respond so when server respond when server respond that nothing home page of gmail is provided home page home page of gmail is provided from this and there is a log that if you have your registered id if you are getting to that or you are new to the gmail you create your new account you can go through the information about your gmail everything is available on that home page exactly same thing we are going to do now for our client server technology For our process also, so we have many servers. In that many servers, we are going to discuss about a server called IIS server, <laughs> Internet Information Services server. What is that server called? IIS server it is called. So now we are going to study about that. Now. Before even I go uh, for that, there is something important to know about these two things. What is it? One, what happens in your standalone application? Standalone application. Simple. If it is standalone application. going to run only on a particular machine and you are going to use the resources of that particular machine just and on that machine processing will happen on that machine all happens on that particular machine itself you understand that is the reason that is the reason they are called rich application because all resources of that particular system are used resources of that particular machine are used
okay and similarly similarly when it comes to uh, this one uh, what do you call uh, mm, internet based application just now what i was saying is about individual application console applications windows applications windows services applications all will run on particular machine itself you understand and now now what i'm saying uh, in order for a user uh, to make a application run on it compulsory require a support of what web server so i mean to say if you me anyone who has a browser and if you want uh, to make use of an application okay uh, which application that application which is running on web server running on what web server what is that server called http server what are browser called http client http clients clients browsers are called servers are called http server so iis is also one server only which server web server you call iis is a web server who provided it microsoft along with what os what do you do we run our applications on that we host our applications on that it is best to use a term hosting we are going to host our applications on iis server web server interesting thing interesting thing comparison now for example assume that using oops object oriented programming i developed one program on my machine on my machine and i compile it executed everything is fine compiled also executed also so simple analyzation i am in a position to execute the code on my machine which means i have a .NET framework available on my system what do you have .NET framework because my application is based on .NET framework who will run my program .NET framework how do you link your program with a .NET framework exactly what i do now i'll share that program with you now i i will share that program with you and you will download that program in your machine can you run my program directly definitely not definitely not what you should have then you should have even in your personal computer you should have even in your personal computer what dot net framework so it means a machine where application is developed requires dot net framework plus a machine where your a machine where you are deploying the application where you are executing the application there also you require to have dot net framework but what about web application what about web application for example i i i as a web developer will develop one web application on iis server i will develop and you people are going to use that application who developed myself who is using it you all three are using so since i developed i run my program i compile my program so for on server machine i should have dot net framework but not on client machine that makes a difference between between what c sharp and asp source and destination both requires dot net framework if you are planning to execute c sharp application but it is not the case if it is asp or web application web application is required only on uh, web sorry dot net framework is required only on on server but not for clients then what client should have 
client should have only browser software however program is executed on server you will be getting only response i already developed everything do you understand what exactly the process is and here you know especially in this uh, uh, client server technology of asp.net what you learn is listen for example since since we have uh, application available on server so dotnet framework is also available only on server only on server so i am going to install dotnet framework on server i develop i compile i execute everything is done clients will be given access to that server so clients can only get the information with request and response okay but they won't be but they won't be or they don't need any framework to run that application okay and and another important thing what is the protocol that is used to make your server application run now it is called http protocol we are going to use http protocol but today we find latest protocol as https protocol but we are going to develop our web applications of asp.net using http not https because in order to make https protocol on our operating system you have to download some additional kits from internet and then they should be installed then they then it will allow you to use http yes uh, protocol but as no i don't we don't have that process so obviously we will be learning how to develop web application on what http using http protocol and remember another important thing http protocol has been designed or it has been developed by w3c who developed w3c i already said w3c is one non profit organization so whenever w3c develops something it is not for a particular company it is for the benefit of all the companies first point on http protocol it is a w3c specification and it is always what secured simple example you take simple example you know we studied in html we studied html about formatting tags formatting tags bold strong italic emphasize subscript superscript underline strike out we studied all these things formatting tags now in that formatting tags if i use a formatting tag called b b bold on any browser you run on any browser the meaning of b will not change that is what http uh, that is what w3c has done it made b to understand to all browsers as bold only w3c doesn't say that b means bold for internet explorer b means bright for chrome b means black for someone else b means something else for something else it doesn't make such point w3c w3c says all browsers will have an ability to run html tag
ओके क्लियर नो दैट इज अबाउट द फर्स्ट पॉइंट ऑन एच टी डी पी प्रोटोकॉल सेकेंड प्रोटोकॉल सेकेंड पॉइंट ऑन प्रोटोकॉल एच टी डी पी प्रोटोकॉल इज एच टी टी पी प्रोटोकॉल इज द सेफेस्ट प्रोटोकॉल इन इंटरनेट सेफेस्ट प्रोटोकॉल नाउ वाइट इज कॉल्ड सेफेस्ट प्रोटोकॉल यू नो फॉर एग्जाम्पल से वेब एप्लीकेशन इज देर ऑन माइ मेशीन नो हियर हियर ऑन माइ मेशीन वेर सम इन हार्ड डिस्क इन सम ड्राइव इन सम फोल्डर आई मेड वन वेब एप्लीकेशन अवेलेबल ओके एंड नाउ वॉट exactly i want to conclude is what i want to conclude is for example uh, here uh, if at all if at all i give access to all the people whoever want to use my web application i give privil i give permissions for them i give permissions for them so to whom to whom i'll give so like for example i'll give permissions around the globe whoever wants to access they can access my website it's my personal website it contains my profile it contains my courses what i teach it contains brochures it contains everything everything it contains about my uh, this one and i give privileges to everyone so now what happens for example x user will access my website from his machine from his browser and connects to my machine that is server and from my hard disk my file will be given as response to him he is sitting in some corner of the world i am sitting in some corner of the world but he is in a position to interact with my machine and he is in a position to get the data from my machine and he will be produced the output in the form of response now my question is when that person communicates with my machine can i can i extract his hard disk information from from server can i extract that client's hard disk can i access what is there in his machine can i do that if really if this would have been a case today no one no one would have been using internet no one no one because it would not have been made your information secured people would have just like that access your hard disk and extract and they would have stolen a lot information from your machine that server will not allow server gives response but server cannot access client that is the reason it is called what is it called safest protocol in internet do you understand now imagine a case a simple example i'll say this is for your reference i'm saying i have one pdf 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 and you people want to use that pdf where is pdf in my hard disk ah so what you are doing you are extracting that hard disk you are trying to get that pdf information so what will happen in that scenario what will happen will server will server give you that information uh, in your hard disk no server will allow you to download server will allow you to download download do you understand server will allow you to download the software so when you download what will happen exactly what will happen when they download when you download when you download that software will come or the pdf will come and loads in or it will be downloaded in your machine now you have to do you have to you want print out of the pdf you send that pdf to print out server will not send that document to print out server will not send that pdf to printer server will ask you to download and after downloading 
you manually have to send that information to what printer do you understand that is the reason what is it called safest protocol on internet third rule third point on http protocol remember http protocol is called stateless protocol what is it called stateless stateless protocol why why simple simple you make a you make from your browser from your browser you make a request to my server okay you make a request so server will your your request will come to my server server will receive that request server will process that request okay server knows that who requested what requested what it should process how much it should give response what to response what not to response what is important what is not important everything it will decide everything it will decide in that an interesting thing now is interesting thing now is when it makes a response when it makes a response it will give only what is needed it can't give everything available on the server but point is point is as server you know i said everything server receives the request server will process the request server will returns the response server knows who requested server knows what requested server knows what to process everything but the problem is once it returns the response to the client remember server forgets everything everything about the client who asked what asked what processed what responded everything it will forget imagine a situation imagine a situation imagine a situation i have a class strength of say for example 500 students in a class i have a strength class strength of 500 students in that 500 students some student asked me a doubt some student asked me okay mm. now interesting thing is interesting thing is i know because he is sitting in my class i know he is my student i know what question he asked and i receive his question then i i process his question what is he talking about then i'll respond to him after that i forget him i definitely forget him 500 student where someone is raising a question definitely i can't remember him i forget him that is what is happening by http protocol that is the reason it is called stateless protocol so what is now you need we want server to remember us server should remember me because i may go back to server for something else also for that reason in asp.net we have one of the most important topics to study called state management techniques state management techniques so in that state management techniques we'll we'll get back to you how do you make a server remember you how do you make a server process your continuation of your previous request how do you make your server to to return a continuation of previous response these things we will do in which which topic as it state management techniques and we can make server remember about us using state management around seven techniques six or seven techniques are there in that six or seven techniques
Do you understand what exactly I'm talking about? So these are the different uh, things that are available for our Do you understand that is about stateless protocol right and another important thing is http always communicates in string format that is the reason http is always virus free and interesting thing is it is platform independent any browser you take on any device you take laptop also same google.com will come small device device that is your uh, mobile there also you'll get same google.com right even if i go on tablet i'll get same google.com even if i'm using desktop also same google.com everywhere i'll get same google.com no one will restrict me to access that google.com platform independent any from anywhere i can access from any device from any operating system you are using Google on Android, you are using Google on iOS, you are using Google on Windows, you are using Google on Linux, you are using Google on various other operating systems. Right? And another important thing is HTTP protocol always works on full technology. Full, full technology. It means whatever is there on the server, you can pull everything everything available on web server you can pull but you can push only if server allows you can you upload your resume on any website just like that on any website can you just upload your resume on any simple example let me ask you you go to amazon amazon.in can you upload a resume there they should give you privileges they should give you permission then you can upload something on their on their server but can you access anything from their server yeah you go to hundreds of categories of the products you go to hundreds of uh, uh, comparisons they don't restrict you for that pull pull technology pull the information pushing is not allowed pushing is allowed based on permission pulling doesn't require any permission do you understand Total four to five points I said on HTTP protocol. One designed by W3C. I said second is safest protocol. Third I said stateless protocol. Always communicates in string and it works on full technology. That's it. This is theory about web server and web client. That's it. Tomorrow's class may I'll be talking about something called CGI variables and we'll talk about get method post method and after that we will see how to install IIS server tomorrow's class may we will be learning how to install IIS server and after that I'll show you one or two small examples on how to make your application run on IIS then we will start off with classic ASP.